The landing site the Americans chose was through the mountains out in the flat remote desert beyond, 10 miles from habitation. But across it runs a road upon which perhaps a dozen vehicles pass each hour. We travelled, as did the only Iranian witnesses to what happened last Thursday night, by bus. Two or three buses a day run the 14 hours from Tabas to Yazd. The Americans seem not to have anticipated that one would pass whilst they were here. The passengers arrived before the rescue attempt burst into flames. They were ordered from their bus around 9.30 in the evening and were then to observe at close quarters what the world has argued about ever since. The helicopters appear to have landed first. Six of them, no evidence of more. Beside each, a telltale stack of empty cans revealed that their occupants had had time for a meal. Inside the belly of one helicopter that remained intact, guns, bullets, first aid, camouflage, radio equipment. Outside, refueling pumps, but no sign of lights to guide other craft down. After the helicopters had landed, but before the inferno, a tanker moved towards the landing site. We met its driver, who we found inspecting what had been his vehicle. He explained he'd been driving when he heard a gunshot, felt the bullet hit his tanker. Then something hit his front wheels and he stopped. Then he saw two men in combat jackets, Americans, on their bellies moving with guns. A bullet shattered his windscreen, the glass cutting him about the eye. He jumped from the tanker as it burst into flames. It appears he had met an American outpost several hundred yards from the landing site. They'd sought to use his flaming truck as a roadblock to discourage other traffic. He then ran away, never saw flames in the distance, and put the time at 10.30 last Thursday night. The crash happened later. It was to result in the devastation of one of the massive transport planes and one of the helicopters. This is the core of the tragedy. First impressions might suggest that this is simply the wreckage of the giant C-130 transport plane. But this is the entire rotor assembly of one of the American helicopters that were involved in the rescue attempt. It was parked over here, and it was when it took off on a mistaken bearing that it sliced into the Hercules plane. That, at least, is the version that has flowed from America in the past few days. But a combination of factors that we found suggested the possibility that the Hercules had, in fact, ploughed into the helicopter. The ruts left behind in the aftermath of landing appear to have swerved to miss another helicopter. The reverse thrust of the plane's huge propellers blowing sand forward around the cockpit in pitch darkness may have persuaded the pilot that he'd passed the last helicopter. The propellers on the impact side are in smithereens as if they hit something static whilst still in motion. Yet the helicopter blades are practically intact, suggesting they were not rotating. The molten aluminium marked the intense heat of the blaze which followed, so intense that no American could get near to drag clear the bodies in the wreckage. The strong implication that this plane had brought the helicopter's lifeblood, without which now the mission was doomed, the fuel. A hundred yards away, the only other tracks left by a plane, those of another Hercules, the plane by which the Americans were now to escape. There was no sign that any other craft landed, only two planes and six helicopters here then. So what happened to the others? Did they land elsewhere? Amid frantic moves to leave, the Americans splashed jet fuel on their grounded craft. They fired into some of them. Three caught fire and were totally destroyed. Two survived. One was even started by the Iranians themselves late last night. The bus people, they let go. These terrified country folk fled the blaze, their worldly possessions left in a heap beyond the carnage. And the Americans, crammed desperately into the belly of one surviving plane, lifted off, comforting four desperately burnt compatriots, abandoning a scene of utter hopelessness and leaving behind any chance of rescuing 50 hostages held 400 miles beyond these desert wastes. John Snow, News at 10, at the American crash site, in Iran.